from the standpoint of been wanting to be part of the, the internet and uh, I, I figured if we could make enough money to just get by it would be that would be okay and when we, when we started off uh, we, we, we literally only had like one computer and so it would be our web server during the day and I'd code at night um, and we, we just got a, a, a small office um, uh, in, in Palo Alto back when rent was not insane. It was cheaper than an apartment, so we actually just slept in the office and then showered at the YMCA at Page Mill El Camino. So we'd walk over there and, and, and shower. Tesla was under the most relentless short seller attack in the history of the stock market. T Tesla was the most shorted stock in the history of stock markets. So, you know, this was affecting our ability to hire people, it was affecting our ability to sell cars. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, they wanted Tesla to die so bad they could taste it. Well, most of them have paid the price. Yes. Where are they now? <laughs> just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. But all those things improve the odds of success. So when people say, tell me, like, well, what can you do to encourage entrepreneurs to start companies? I'm like, if you need encouragement, don't start a company. We basically messed up almost every aspect of the Model 3 production line, from cells to, to packs to motors, uh, body line, the paint shop, uh, final assembly, um, everything. Everything was messed up. I, I lived in the Fremont and, and Nevada factories uh, for, for three years, fixing the, the, that production line, running around like a maniac through every part of that factory, living with the team. Yeah. I, I slept on the floor so that, the, so that the, the team who was going through a hard time could see me on the floor. Uh, that, that they knew that I was not in some ivory tower. And Whatever pain they experienced, I, was, I had it more. I mean, there wasn't any other way to make it work. There were three years of hell. 2017, 18, and 19 were three years, the longest period of excruciating pain in my life. There wasn't any other way, and we barely made it, and we were on the ragged edge of bankruptcy the entire time. Do you feel that, that this, this challenge of figuring out the, the new way of manufacturing, you, you actually have an edge now that it's different, that you've figured out how to do this? At this point, I think I know more about manufacturing than anyone currently alive on Earth. <laughs> yeah. I, can tell you, I can tell you how every damn part, part in that car is made. But I'm not afraid of dying. I think it will come as a relief, so. Although you may not be able to see the vision of SpaceX come true in your life. Well, I'd like to live long enough to see that. Being at a net worth of 230 billion, roughly, being perceived as the richest person. Do you know John Law? I don't know. John Law used to be the richest person on Earth 300 years ago. Okay. He was a, a poker player, a gambler. He was the biggest art collector on Earth, so a lot of superlatives. Wow. In the okay. end, he went bankrupt. What? That's a pretty far to fall. Did you ever thought about that option that something could go wrong and that you could one day lose everything? I mean, there's been many times where I expected to lose everything. Not, you know, uh, I mean, who starts a car company and a rocket company expecting them to succeed? Certainly not me. I thought they both had less than a 10% chance of success. Uh, like, if I go bankrupt, fine, I whatever. I don't care. So many people from, uh, so many young people actually, from across the globe, if you have an advice to them, young people globally who want to be like Elon Musk, what's your advice to them? I think that probably they shouldn't want to be. <laughs> you? <laughs> it, it, I think it sounds better than it is. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, not as much fun being me as you'd think. There's definitely, it could be worse for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really hard starting a company. I mean, you have to basically be prepared to work constantly, um, you know, from when you wake up to when you, when you go to sleep, um, you have to be willing to deal with um, a lot of difficult problems and thorny problems. Um, you have to be uh, 
willing to deal with an enormous amount of stress. Um, mm. And you just got to push yourself super, super hard. I, I wouldn't recommend it for most people. <laughs> Try to be useful. Um, you know, do things that are useful to your fellow human beings, to the world. It's very hard to be useful. Very hard. Um, you know, are you, are you contributing more than you consume? You know, like, uh, tr try to have a positive net contribution to society. Um, I think that's the thing to aim for. You know, not, not to try to be sort of a leader for, just for the sake of being a leader or whatever. Um, a lot of times, the, pe the people you want as leaders are, are the people who don't want to be leaders. <laughs> so, if you can live a, a useful life, that is a good life. A life worth having lived. I would, I would encourage people to uh, use the, the mental tools of physics and apply them broadly in life. SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, and Boring Company are philanthropy. If you say philanthropy is love of humanity, um, they are philanthropy. They're, Tesla is accelerating sustainable energy. This is a love of of philanthropy. Right. Uh, SpaceX is trying to ensure the long-term survival of humanity with multi-planet species. This is love of humanity. Um, you know, Neuralink is, is to help solve uh, brain injuries and uh, existential risk with AI, love of humanity. Warren Company is trying to solve traffic, which is hell for most people, and uh, th that also is love right. of humanity. I'd encourage people to read a lot of books. Hmm. Just read, basically try to ingest as much information as you can, uh, and try to also just develop a good general knowledge. Um, so, so you at least have like a rough lay of the land of the the knowledge landscape. Um, like try to learn a little bit about a lot of things, because um, you might not know what you're really interested. In. How would you know what you're really interested in if you at least aren't like doing a peripheral expo exploration of broadly of of the knowledge landscape, and, and t you talk to people from different walks of life and different uh, industries and professions and skills and occupations like just try you know learn as much as possible man search for meaning isn't the whole thing a search for meaning is yeah what's the meaning of life and all you know but just generally like i said i would, I would encourage people to read broadly um in many different subject areas and 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 then try to find something where there's an overlap of your talents and and what you're interested in. So people may, may, may be good at something, but or they may have sk skill at a particular thing, but they don't like doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to try to find a, th a thing where you ha your th that's a good a good uh, combination of of your of the things that you're inherently good at, but you also like doing. When you had that third failure in a row, mm -hmm. did you think I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Essentially, like the, the longer you do anything, the, the more mistakes that, that, right. that you will make cumulatively, which if you sum up those mistakes, will sound like uh, I'm the worst predictor ever. But for example, for Tesla vehicle growth, uh, I, I said, I think we're doing 50% and we've, we've done 80%. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but they don't mention that one. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, I'm not sure what my exact track record is on predictions. They're more optimistic than pessimistic, but they're not all optimistic. Um, some of them uh, are exceeded, uh, probably m more are later, um, but they, they, they do come true. It's very rare that they do not come true. I mean, I don't aim to disrupt for the sake of disrupting, you know. Um, it, it's, it's more like there's... Um, thinking about w w what set of actions, what set of actions are most likely to lead to a better future. And so, you know, in, in order, for, one of the things obviously, in order for, to, for humanity to have a compelling future for civilization is that we must have a clear path to a sustainable energy future. That's one of the things that I think everyone I think would, would agree with. I'm, I'm not someone who, who would tend to sort of demonize oil and gas, to be clear. Um, this is necessary uh, right now or, or, or civilization could not function. So I do think we actually need, um, and actually at this time, I think we actually need uh, more oil and gas, not less. Mm -hmm. um, 
but, but simultaneously uh, moving as fast as we can to a sustainable uh, energy uh, economy. I was living in the, in the, in the factory in Fremont um, and, and the one in, in Nevada for three years straight. That was my primary residence. <laughs> Not kidding, literally. Did you keep the couch? <laughs> I, I actually slept, well, I slept in a couch at one point on a, in a tent on the roof. Um, <laughs> And then, but for a while there, I was just sleeping uh, under my desk, which is out in the open in the factory, um, and, and for an important reason. And it was damn uncomfortable sleeping on that floor. And I always, when I woke up, I'd smell like metal dust. Yeah, but I, actually, I stopped using the couch in the, because in, in, there's a little conference room and a couch there. I stopped using the couch, and I just slept on the floor under my desk so, that the, so during shift change, the entire team could see me. And this is important because... Like, you know, the, the, and the, the team, it, like, if, 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 if they think that the, the sort of their leader is, is off somewhere having a good time, you know, drinking Mai Tais on a tropical island, the thing is that since the team could see me sleeping on the floor um, during shift change, with, uh, just not with nothing, um, the, they knew I was there. And that made a huge difference. And then they gave it their all. What kind of characteristics does an entrepreneur need or have to be someone like you? Well, I think uh, certainly uh, you need to be very driven and have a high pain threshold. Elon, you are reported by Forbes and everyone else as, as now you know, the world's richest person. That's not a sovereign. <laughs> you know, I think it's fair to say that uh, if somebody is like the king or de facto uh, king of a country, they're wealthier than I am. So, but, but it's just harder to measure. But what people do, so, so $300 billion, I mean, your, your net worth on any given day is rising or falling by <laughs> yeah. several billion dollars. How insane, <laughs> how insane bonkers, is that? yeah. I mean, does that, how, how, do you, how do you handle that psychologically? Very, there aren't many people in the world who have to even think about that. I, I actually don't think about that too much, but the, the the, the thing that is actually uh, more, more difficult and, and that does make sleeping difficult is that um, you know, every good hour uh, or even minute of thinking about uh, Tesla and, and SpaceX has such a big effect on the company that I, I really try to work as, as, as much as possible uh, you know, to, to the edge of sanity, basically, uh, because the, you know, t Tesla's getting to the point where uh, probably will get to the point later this year where every good, every high quality minute of thinking um, uh, is a million dollars to, to uh, impact on, on Tesla. One of the biggest mistakes people generally make, and I'm guilty of it too, is wishful thinking. You know, like you want something to be true even if it isn't true. Um, and so you ignore the things that, uh, you, you ignore the real truth because of what you want to be true. Um, this is a very difficult trap to avoid. Um, and like I said, it's certainly one that I uh, find myself in having problems with. But if you just take that approach of you're always to some degree wrong and your goal is to be less wrong. Um, so a, a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit. And it's, it's, that, is a, it, that is a really difficult thing to, to tell you. Can you tell the difference between those two things? Right. You know? So you need to be sort of very rigorous um, in, in your self-analysis. Uh, self you, you guys are the, the magicians of the 21st century. You know, um, don't let anything hold you back. Uh, imagination is, is the limit. Um, and um, go out there and create some magic what uh, Elon has to say about how he takes risks. Anyway, I literally just try to use a scientific method, frankly, and uh, w you know, consider the, um, you know, what, what is the importance of the outcome and what, uh, what, what is one risking in, in order to achieve that outcome. And, uh, but like I said, if the outcome is important enough, even if the probability of success is low, one must, I think, still, still do it, in, in my view. Um, you know, some things are very important in order to have a good future, and if we don't do them, 
well, then we're in big trouble. And so, I, and then, then how much of a risk really is it? Because if we don't take those actions, we won't have a good future. Um, and I think the riskiest thing would be no action. Put a lot of stock and certainly have a lot of respect for someone who puts in an honest day's work uh, to do useful things. And, and just generally to have like a, not a zero sum mindset um, or, or a, like have, have more of a grow the pie mindset. Like the, if you, if you sort of say like when, when we see people like perhaps um, including some very smart people kind of t uh, taking an attitude of uh, like, 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 like doing things that seem like morally questionable, it's often because they have at, at a base sort of axiomatic level a zero sum mindset um, and and they without realizing it they don't realize they have a, a, zero, a zero sum mindset or, or at least they, they don't realize it consciously um, and so if, if you have a zero sum mindset then the only way to get ahead is by taking things from others uh, if, if it's like if, 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 if the if the pie is fixed then the only way to have more pie is to take someone else's pie but but this is false like obviously the pie has grown dramatically over time the economic pie um, so the rea in reality, you can have the <laughs> so overuse this analogy. You can have a, a lot of you can have the, there's a lot of pie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, pie, pie is not fixed. Yes. Um, uh, so you, you really want to make sure you don't you're not operating um, without realizing it from a zero sum mindset, where where the only way to get ahead is to take things from others. Then that's going to result in you ta trying to take things from others, which is not not good. It's much better to work on. Uh, at, adding to the economic pie. So when I interview somebody, the, my interview question is always the same. I said, tell me the story of your life and, and the decisions that you made along the way and why you made them. And then, and, it, and also tell me about some of the most difficult problems you worked on and how you solved them. And um, that, that, that question I think is very important to you because the people that really solved the problem, they know exactly how they solved it. Uh, they know the little details. And the people that pretended to solve the problem, they can maybe go one level and then they get stuck. Are you happy at the moment? I think there's degrees of love. But certainly for one to be um, well, fully happy, I think you have to be happy in work and happy in love. I suppose I'm medium happy. <laughs> there are degrees of happiness. Can love or projects for work compensate love among people? I think love of work, in my experience, could at best make one halfway happy. What was your biggest challenge in life? One of the biggest challenges, I think, is making sure you have a corrective feedback loop and then maintaining that corrective feedback loop over time, even when people want to tell you exactly what you want to hear, okay. that's a very difficult.